Hi everyone, and today this is going to be a simple video. I'm taking a look at Canon's newest kit lens for APS-C digital SLR cameras, the EFS 18 to 55 mm f4 to 5.6 IS STM. I'm mostly interested to see if it's any improvement on their previous lens. You can tell that this is the newest lens because of that maximum aperture of f4 to 5.6 instead of f3.5 to 5.6, that's the only difference in name. I finally managed to find a brand new white box copy of one of these newer lenses for only about £70 over on the Ebays, so you can buy them separately if you look around. And it will not fit on full frame cameras at all, it's designed for APS-C. But before I start, I want to say congratulations to Kafir Luson for being the first to comment on no less than three of my previous lens reviews. I appreciate all my subscribers, but few have shown such dedication and reflexes, so good work Kafir, I'm sure that other great achievements are in store for your future. Anyway, now Canon's kit lenses have a reputation for being fairly sharp actually, and their build quality and autofocus capabilities are not too bad either, not like in the old days. It's the lens's parameters which are basic. An 18 to 55mm zoom range goes from an averagely wide angle into short telephoto. The full frame equivalent of about 29 to 88mm, so that's useful but other zoom lenses can go from a bit of a wider angle. And the maximum aperture of f4 to 5.6 means that this lens does not let in a lot of light, getting darker as you zoom in, and it can't give you particularly out of focus backgrounds in your images either. A lot of beginner photographers will keep this lens in their kit bag, but then move on to get something with a faster aperture, like a 50mm f1.8 lens, for more artistic images. Still, the kit lens's narrow maximum aperture does at least mean that it can be small and light, which some landscape photographers appreciate, especially if you're walking long distances. And we can especially see that when we compare the new kit lens to the old. The new kit lens's maximum aperture starts at f4 at its widest angle, a tiny bit darker than the older lens's f3.5, but the new lens is 20% shorter, and that's a good trade-off in my opinion. Although neither lens can touch the small size of some kit lenses for mirrorless cameras, but that's another story. Another small design difference is that the front element of the new lens is fully collapsed at that widest angle of 18mm, whereas in the older lens that falls in the middle of the zoom range somewhere. I prefer that the new lens collapses in when you zoom out, makes it a little quicker to put away. It's just a small difference though. The new lens is still based on a plastic mount, as you'd expect for something in this price range, but unlike the older lens, there's a glass element at the rear which seals off the inside, which should help keep the lens better sealed against dust and moisture. The lens uses Canon's STM autofocus system, which is fast and silent, and it's designed to be especially efficient at focusing when you're doing video work or shooting in live view mode, so that's all good. The focus ring is nice and smooth, and it's electronically coupled to the motor, so you have to switch the lens to manual focus in order for it to work. The zoom ring on this brand new lens turns really nice and smoothly, but I can warn you, those kit lens zoom rings stiffen up over time. One nice hidden feature of Canon's newest zoom lenses, uh, with variable maximum apertures, is that if you're shooting at an aperture of f5.6 or darker, and you zoom in all the way or zoom out, you don't see any sudden changes in light levels as you're shooting video, if you're not zooming in too quickly. Video makers will appreciate this. This lens also features image stabilization to help you get smoother video footage and sharper still pictures. Like on the previous lens, I found it to be pretty impressive. Here's some footage with it turned off and now on. Even zoomed in to 55mm, it can still hold your image pretty still. All in all, for an inexpensive kit lens, the build quality is nice enough, a little smaller and better than the previous version. Now let's see about differences in image quality. 
we'll compare the older f3.5 to 5.6 STM lens on the left and the newer f4 to 5.6 STM lens on the right. I've adapted the lens onto my 24 megapixel APS-C camera, a Canon EOS M3, and I've turned off all in-camera corrections, so we can get a really good idea of any differences. At 18mm and their respective widest apertures, they're both very sharp in the middle of the image. Perhaps the new lens has a tiny advantage. The image quality in the corners is pretty much the same, although interestingly, the chromatic aberration you can see is a different colour if you look carefully. Image quality remains the same even as you stop down the aperture as far as f8, so there's little difference so far. At 35mm, the older lens retains its small aperture advantage, going as wide as f4.5, whereas the new lens can only manage f5. Realistically though, there'll be no difference, and realistically there's still no difference in image quality either, from the middle of the image to the edges. They're both fairly sharp. And finally, 55mm. Same story, straight from f5.6, they're both fairly sharp, from the middle of the image and into the corners. Perhaps the newer lens has a tiny advantage in contrast. Stopping down to f8 doesn't really make much difference. Overall, both lenses are about the same, decently sharp for a kit lens. Far better than the Sony kit lens I've been working on testing recently, anyway. When it comes to distortion and vignetting, both lenses perform the same, as you might expect. Quite strong barrel distortion at 18mm with dark corners at f4, which brighten up when you stop down to f5.6 or down to f8. If you zoom in to 26mm, then the distortion straightens out, but zoom all the way into 55mm to see pincushion distortion and just a touch of corner shading at f5.6, which is gone at f8. So it's a slightly weak performance for distortion, but the vignetting isn't too bad. Let's see about close-up image quality, where there are finally a few differences. Both lenses are advertised as being able to focus as closely as 25cm, but in my testing, the older lens could get you quite a bit closer. When we look closely at f5.6, the newer lens is perhaps a little sharper, but shows more colour fringing. Stop the lenses down to f8 for good improvements, the newer lens is maybe a little sharper. Let's see how the lenses work against bright light. They both show about the same level of flaring, perhaps the newer lens fares just a little better. And bokeh? Well, because of the narrow maximum aperture, you can't really get very out of focus backgrounds in your pictures, it's just a kit lens. But when you do get out of focus backgrounds, they both give you nice enough quality bokeh. At the end of the day, after all my careful testing, I found that, optically, the new lens is about the same as the old, and that's not really a bad thing. The only real difference is in close-up image quality. The newer lens is 20% smaller and slightly better built, and the older lens has a very slightly brighter maximum aperture. If I had to choose, I would just go for the new lens. Small is beautiful in camera land, if you ask me.